Hi, this is Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. And what we're going to do is make Italian bread. But we're going to make what's called Sicilian scroll bread. And it is um, it has a glaze on it and then sesame seeds. Or you can leave it plain if you prefer. I'm going to start off by giving you the recipe right off the bat because I no longer print out the recipe beneath the the video now i did make the dough in my bread maker on the dough cycle you can make this bread by hand if you prefer but i like my bread maker because i get consistent results each time and it's just easier for me and i like the results but this is what you would need four cups of salmolina flour one cup of white bread flour two teaspoons of salt and you will need three and um, a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast okay um, and then you will need one and a half cups of water I usually heat my water to at least about on this one about 110 degrees Fahrenheit I put it in a coffee mug and heat it in my microwave and you will need two tablespoons of olive oil and then of course sesame seeds uh, to put on top if you're going to do that okay so I want to show you what the dough looks like once it comes out of um, your uh, bread maker on the dough cycle okay and this is what it's going to look like I put a little, uh, just a little flour on the top of my uh, countertop. It's a nice dough to work with. It's uh, quite elastic. Uh, it's not sticky or anything like that. It's kind of a pleasure to work with it. And I just actually just take it and um, uh, make it into like a long uh, piece here. Like a rectangle here okay and then I stretch it just a little bit not too much and then what I like to do is once I stretch it a little bit on each end and then down the width of it is that I fold it over just like that looks like a hot dog bun and then I just pinch the seams together like that just pull them together and then pinch them together all the way from one end to the other just pinch and then I roll it over but then once again I start pressing on that seam to bring it together okay and just stay with it it, it fights you a little bit but you're going to be able to do it okay all right and then once you do that, then I just even it out and kind of take the palm of my hand on the ends like that. Try to make it so that, you know, one's not fatter on one and the other, but it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're actually going to make like the letter, the top of a letter S for scroll. I mean, let me put it that way to the camera maybe you'll see it better and like that just like the letter S what I like to do is though I don't put them too close together I try to leave a little bit of gap because um, once it rises and whatever and it bakes it will come together um, I like it to have a little bit of spacing though when it uh, when it is baked up um, but if they do completely close up when they're baking it doesn't affect of course the taste of, of the bread or anything like that it just I particularly like to have just a little bit of space uh, in between now put it on a grease cookie sheet or cookie pan whatever you're gonna uh, bake it on you can use your parchment paper if you want and again just to leave a little bit of space um, on you can see that scroll or that S okay like that and it doesn't have to be perfect okay now then what you'll want to do is you'll want to cover it with a towel 
and you'll want to keep put this in the warmest part of your kitchen and it might take you 40 minutes it might take you up to an hour to double in size it really depends on the temperature of your kitchen for me today um, it was very very quick um, it came up in about a little little over 50 minutes uh, because it's very warm very warm in my kitchen uh, uh, today okay now once it rises double then I'm just going to do it now to show you I usually wait till it's risen but I just take an egg wash if you don't want to use an egg wash you could use the whites of the eggs just beat them up a little bit or you can just use water if you prefer and then just put your egg wash or your water all over it with your pastry brush or whatever you're going to use to paint it with. Okay, and again, I prefer to usually wait till it's double in size to do this. And then just take your sesame seeds and then just sprinkle a generous amount. If you don't want to put too much leave a little less if you like a lot of seeds then feel free to put more on there but remember it will have to be doubled in size okay let me grab another another towel here another little uh, tea towel or I like the linen towels because uh, they don't have um, you know any lint to them that kind of thing all right now I'm going to just rinse my hands out quickly because I want to show you the finished product and I work, was working with raw eggs so I certainly don't want to touch that bread with that on my hands okay once it bakes up it will come out and look like this as you can see, there is a separation uh, between a little bit. That's the way that I like it. Some people might like it where it's completely closed and it bakes. This one, you can see, has a little bit more where it's come together. It doesn't matter. It's really up to you what you want it to look like. It's not going to change the performance or the taste um, of, of this bread and then you can see it's a nice golden brown and then you've got your nice sesame seeds this particular little one is still a little warm and I like to wait till it's well a bit cooler to really cut it it has a nice beautiful um, golden brown on the bottom okay um, what's nice about the semolina uh, uh, flour and I, I feel the sesame seeds, it almost gives the uh, bread sort of a nutty type uh, um, taste to it. Uh, it is a very, very good tasting bread. Uh, it, it's, um, it, it's, I would say, you know, it's not real hard on the outside. It does have a hard finish. It does have a hard bottom. Do check. Now when you do bake them, we'll go over that because I don't want to forget. What you're going to do is set your oven first at um, 425 degrees. Uh, preheat it and put it in for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, then lower your heat down, okay? Um, I would suggest to lower your heat down to 400 degrees and it can take an additional 25 or 30 minutes. It really depends on your oven because you know all ovens set up so differently. But the first 10 minutes at that higher temperature of that 425 I think is what helps give the harder finish to the bread. It makes it um, uh, more of a crisp type top. Uh, to this chewy bread um, so remember lower the temperature after 10 minutes bring it down to that um, that 400 degrees and it's anywhere from 25 to 30 uh, minutes additional to the 10 okay those aren't added together and I'm just gonna cut into it keep in mind this is still a bit warm but um, I want to show you the flake on it, so I'm going to grab a fork here, and I hope that you can see the uh, crumb that's coming away as I'm 
uh, pulling it from from the bread um, it's very light medium it's a, a, I'd say a medium coarse texture but when you squeeze it the inside is absolutely delicious if you notice it springs right back uh, you'll know too when the, the um, bread is done tap the bottom of it and make sure that you hear a hollow sound um, underneath it uh, to know that it's it's done and let me let me cut this again maybe this way you might be able to see it even better uh, of the inside yet it's not raw you know I always make sure and test my bread to see if you push down on it and it stays down where it's not been baked enough it's not cooked enough but this has been baked properly and again it just springs right back it's so moist it's so uh, light it's about a medium light texture as I mentioned um, uh, just a few uh, seconds ago uh, but it makes for an absolute delicious uh, bread for dinner um, you can also slice it and and toast it or use it for French toast that's what I tend to do if it's if everyone doesn't eat it right away um, I use it for French toast the next day um, it, it is a great um, uh, bread like I said to serve for dinner or you can use it for many other uses if I don't use it and I let it dry out I make breadcrumbs from it so uh, it's really up to you to decide you know when to serve it but it's an absolute delicious um, bread to make with that semolina flour and bread flour okay now if you try this recipe and you like it I'd love to hear from you I always say that in all my videos uh, if you have a question or a comment I'd like to be able to answer you and I will do my very best to answer in a timely fashion but the reason that I'm solely asking you and I'm going to ask you to watch me solely on YouTube because that's the only place I put my videos so when you write to me, I'm going to get your co a question, I'm going to get your comment, and I'm going to be able to answer you. Where it isn't where I'm finding my work on other sites from people taking my work, posting them, pinning them, whatever. Kind of frustrating when you want to answer a person that's been kind enough to write a question or a comment. And I'm not alone on that, that's for sure. But that's why I no longer put the recipe below my videos because it's just not worth it anymore to do so but I want to thank you for watching Diane love to bake if you're so inclined you'd like to subscribe boy I'd appreciate it very much or give this video a like but I want to thank you again for watching Diane love to bake on YouTube give this Sicilian scroll bread a try I think you'd like it stay well stay safe and I'll see you soon.